It's a fantastic process when the, when the music can really grow with the whole production because the music is such an important part of the storytelling. So my name is Hildur Gunnatotir and I am a composer and musician and we are sitting here in my little studio space in Berlin, Kreuzberg. Pretty much everyone in my family are musicians and uh, I grew up with music being the normal thing that you do. So I started playing the cello when I was around five, six, and uh, I have stayed with that instrument until now. I started studying classical cello and I was a pretty terrible student because uh, I, I always had a bit of a hard time um, having a right and wrong way of playing music. So, so to me, music was just such a... Um, uh, clear form of expression and it's uh, to me it was like um, being told that something something you say is right or wrong and and I, I never really liked that very much so I started going more in the direction of experimental music and composition kind of just came with that process and yeah I've, I've always just been kind of curious about where you can take music and and, and like I said because it's such a form of communication for me so so as a result of that started to get kind of curious about films as well and reading of course is is such a um, it is such a solitary thing so you just you know you're, you're sitting there with uh, and making up the whole the whole scenario and the whole whole tempo of, of a script or a, or, or a book that you're reading and, and you have kind of you have like full control over like okay this is what I imagined like this feels like and, and uh, I think it's a really great place to to connect music to because that's that's at least to, to me like when I'm writing music by myself that's kind of exactly what happens it's like you know I I feel this when I this happens or um, you know this should be in this tempo or whatever so so it was like a beautiful start of the of the conversation to have that space to 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 you know be still in the solitary space and be able to really connect to that and then give it forward to the to the director and say like well this is this is what I felt from from this like you know really honest uh, confined place. Chernobyl was a really interesting project to work on because it's affected so many people that are still alive today and because of the events that, that happened were you know so so real I um, I thought it was really important to be as honest as possible about what actually happened there and, and to do as little dramatizing with the music as I could because I, I felt as, as soon as I started doing anything um, fictional with the music, if I tried to add any drums or over emotional strings or anything, I felt it kind of um, took away a little bit from the yeah the, the realness of, of what happened. and, and uh, and I thought it was important that the music had the way to 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 be the radiation because the radiation is the character as such in the in, in these events that that you can't film and you can't see and and uh, but but you need to be able to feel it and I, I felt that the music was a was a good um, place to to feel the radiation and to be able to do that I felt it was very important to understand what radiation is and what it feels like so. Um, I went there with uh, my score producer Sam Slater and Chris Watson, who was a field recording expert, to uh, a power plant in Lithuania, to Ignalina, where the, a lot of the series is filmed. It was just a really, really fascinating uh, process, and it was a little bit like um, uh, like being on a treasure hunt because it's, it's just so much material in, the, in there that you can record and, and uh, so many sounds that are, are um, yeah, just so fascinating. And, uh, and it was also like a really important part of that process for me to, to not make the power plant do any sounds that it wasn't doing. Like I didn't go in there and slam doors and, and like bang on stuff. And, and, uh, but I just wanted to, to hear what it, what it feels like. To actually to, to be there and so the, the music of the series is pretty much based on those recordings so every single sound that you hear in the music 
comes from this power plant and has been kind of molded into a musical uh, musical scenario. So, so we basically managed to turn the power plant into a musical instrument. The Joker is is uh, it's first of all like a, a story of pretty much just one person. It's almost just one character that we're f following throughout the whole process, and and um, so therefore there's a really strong uh, emphasis on on Joaquin and and his performance, which is just so so unbelievably magical. What he managed to do in this performance and and again like you know Todd Phillips the director he uh, it was very much like his vision that that you know this this script that he wrote and and he's a he's a very strong director with a very strong vision so that the direction of the production was quite focused and it's a, such a beautiful process what when, when you can really be in true dialogue throughout the whole process you know Todd was still like Finalizing a script when 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 I started when I started writing and, and then somehow when when you can establish the tonality and the and the tempo and the and the feel of of the sound world you know before they even start shooting or or, or acting or choreographing you know it's it's just a, it's such a beautiful way of 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 having a dialogue without having to kind of get lost in, in uh, explaining things. Music is such an important part of the storytelling and, and uh, I guess in the later years it's been um, more common that the music comes in as the, one of the last elements and and, um, and it's kind of like running a little bit behind the you know the, the last edit and of course like when you are Making a film, there's there's so many elements that you're that you're working with, and so many elements that are working together, like the, you know, the pacing of the cinematography, or like the, uh, you know, the lighting or the movements and the acting. You know, it's just it's such a large scale dialogue, you know. And when you can when you can have this true, true dialogue throughout that whole process, it it just makes it a lot more fun because then you just feel like a bigger part of the whole the whole uh, whole process and then as they started to uh, send me scenes from from the uh, dailies it's called when they're like when they are, are shooting something and then they, they just sent me um, scene by scene before they even started putting anything together then I could see which direction that they were going and what the pacing was that they were doing and how what you know the, the colors that they were working with and how just like the the panning of the camera and all of these things um, could then affect like the, the next step, the steps that I took. So I started to uh, write more music as, as I, you know, started receiving dailies. And of course, it was really inspiring for me to see how much the music was affecting the per performance and, and what they were doing on set. And, and uh, so it just like was thrilling to continue um, for me to kind of, you know, get the ball back and start expanding my, you know, the, the sound world. And then uh, we just kind of kept that ball going back and forth throughout the whole process. This instrument is actually the main character of, of, of the whole uh, initial recording process. So he's called the Haldorophone and he's built uh, by a friend of mine, Haldor Ulvarsson, hence the, where, the, where the name comes from. And so I took this instrument to Nils Fram's studio at the, at the Funk House uh, because I needed like a bigger, bigger space to record in. And yeah, so most of the original recordings come from, from this recording session. So it's like a very kind of amplified, uh, amplified uh, session. And, and a lot of the um, more kind of strange um, soundscape electronic sounds come also from, from, from this instrument and also like played through these amplifiers. So, so I was kind of tampering with, with the sound, but live. So they're all, um, all the sounds that you hear in the film are performed live, like even in scenes where, um, um, I guess most noticeably uh, when it goes into the fridge, if, if people remember that scene, it's this kind of like, like weird sound that happens and, and that's all played live on, on, this, uh, uh, on this instrument. A lot of the work that I do is kind of outside the grid, and it starts with with uh, just kind of being in a being in a flow and, and capturing recordings or capturing performances or capturing audio, uh, which which is never on a grid because I hate grids. And then I, I kind of I'm I'm able to bring it into Cubase and then kind of build things around that performance. And I think Cubase is a is a really great place to. Uh, 
um, do that without having to spend too much time on thinking like, you know, wait, why is this channel not working or how do I bring this up? I think it's kind of, it works pretty intuitively. I mean, there's the first kind of a learning curve, of course, that you have to have with any new environment. And then after you have kind of the, the basic things that you need, you can kind of flow pretty easily between between audio and MIDI and, you know, have a flow between both of them without having the feeling that you're going from a completely separate world to another, you know, it can all kind of work work together in one, even in one window, which I think is fantastic. You don't have to go between windows, like in the new, newer versions. It's just like all, in, all there in one, in one place. And I think for me that works really well and I feel like both, um, both worlds, like the media and the audio, can really kind of coexist really, really nicely. I was working a lot with Johan Johansson, who um, who I worked with on when we worked together on pretty much like all of our all of our projects that we were doing. And he was mostly working Cupis or, or Nuento, but he was like, "Well, I, I think we should uh, I think we should like just make sure that we're both in the same in the same platform." And I think you should. Uh, you should move over to Cubes and, and we can was like we'll do it there. And I was like, yeah, well, sure, whatever. And uh, that was probably yeah around maybe around 2013. And um, so we'd we'd just be kind of sending sessions back and forth uh, between each other, and and uh, and that's also kind of when I when I started to work with uh, with uh, MIDI instruments or like sample banks and and, and stuff like that, and and. Uh, I just found that that Cubase was was a far better place to to do work like that than than any other any other DAW, and then uh, so I I just uh, I just stayed with Cubase since then. <laughs>